Hello and welcome to Controllers Tech. This video is the start of a new series of tutorials on the AVR microcontrollers. I know I have already made a few videos using the ATtiny85 controller, but I am not planning on continuing those videos for now. Actually I wanted to continue the AVR series with a board that has debugger support. This helps us to understand the issue if something is not working as expected. For that reason, I bought this AT Tiny 817 Explained Mini Board. This comes from the microchip itself, it is cheaper compared to other official AVR, so it is better to use for the development purpose. I am going to continue the AVR series with this board. In today's video, we will see how to create our first project, and blink the LED. We will also use the debugger a little, set some breakpoints and understand how to work with it. Let's see the documentation available for the explained mini. The board features an ATtiny817 microcontroller, with one user LED, one user button, and two Q-touch buttons. It supports programming and debugging, and also has a virtual COM port to send the data directly to the computer using the CDC. It can be powered by the USB itself, so we don't need to connect anything else to power and program this board. This is the pinout of the board. Today we are only blinking the LED, which is connected to the pin PC0. Just keep this in mind, as we will need it while we write the code. Let's see the manual for the ATtiny817. This microcontroller features a 24-pin SOC, with 512 bytes of SRAM, 8 kilobytes of flash, and 128 bytes of EEPROM. It can run at a maximum clock of 20 MHz, and have three different timers or counters. It supports all the common peripherals, like UART, SBI, I2C, ADC, DAC, etc. We will cover all of them in this series of tutorials. Let's see the clock controller. There are different clock options available. We can use the internal oscillators of 20 MHz, or 32 kHz. Or we can also run the system with some external clocks if needed. I will use the internal oscillators throughout this series. Here is the clock diagram. The internal oscillator of 20 MHz can clock the main CPU, along with the non-volatile memory, and the RAM. The same clock can also be used for the different peripherals available on the MCU. For RTC, Watchdog, and the Browner out detection, we need to either use the internal or external oscillator of 32 kHz. Whatever oscillator we use, we can use the prescaler to divide the clock further to our requirement. We will now see the clock control registers, but first let's create a new project in Microchip Studio. I have the XC8 compiler installed, which comes by default in the Microchip Studio. Give some name to the project, choose the project folder, and click OK. I have the ATtiny817. Alright the project has been created. Let's define a new function to initialize the clock. The main clock control register A, is used to select which oscillator we are using. As I mentioned, I am going to use the internal 20 MHz oscillator. So we need to write 0 to the first two bits of this register. The seventh bit of this register enables the system clock output to the respective pin. In case you need the clock output for some other use, write a 1 to this position. I don't need the clock in the output, so I am leaving this to 0. Now one important thing about these registers is that they have the change protection which means that we cannot simply change the default configuration of these registers. The AVR has a special way to update these registers. We need to write the data into these registers using the protected write functions. Let's write the value 0 to the main clock control A register. Next is the main clock control B register. 
This register controls the prescaling of the main clock. The first bit is used to enable or disable the prescaler, and the next four bits are used to set the prescaler value. Since we do want to use the prescaler, we will write a 1 to this zeroth bit. The main clock is at 20 MHz right now. Since we are only blinking the LED, the clock is not the priority for today's tutorial. So I will use the prescaler of 4, which will bring the clock down to 5 MHz. So basically we need to write a 1 to the bits, ranging from bit 1 to bit 4. Our final data for this register is, 00011, which is 3 hex. This register is also protected using CCP, so we will again use the protected write. Let's write the value 3 hex to the main clock control B. The next register is the main clock lock, and it is used to lock the clock configuration we just made. This prevents the clock registers from unintentional modification by the software. We don't need it for today, so let's skip it. Next is the clock status register. This register is used to check the state of the different oscillators. Since we are using the internal oscillator, it can be used to check if the oscillator is stable or not. The bit 4 of this register is set to 1 if the oscillator is stable. In our code, we will wait for the bit 4 of the status register to set to 1. This will make sure that the internal oscillator is stable, and we can proceed further. The next register controls if the oscillator will run during the standby. Let's leave it to the default settings for now. Next is the calibration for the oscillator. I am leaving it to default settings as well. Then we have the setup for the other oscillators, which we don't need for now. So this is it for the clock setup. We have set the internal oscillator of 20 MHz with a prescaler of 4, so our final clock to the CPU is 5 MHz. Let's define it in the file. Also include the delay library for the delay functions to work. Now we will see the port registers, which control the I.O. pin configuration. The general purpose pins can be configured with internal pull-up, and they can also be inverted. The interrupt can be triggered with different configurations. It can sense both rising and falling edges of the input signal, which will be useful for our input signal measurement later in the series. Let's see the registers available for the port configuration. We have the direction register, which can be used to set the direction of the pin as output, or input. Writing a zero to the respective pin sets it as input, while writing one to the pin sets it as the output pin. Other than the direction register, we also have some other registers to control the direction of the pin. The first is the direction set register. This register can also be used to set the pin as output by writing a one to the particular pin. Note that we can only set the pin as output using this register. Writing a zero to a pin has no effect on the pin. This register can be used for the read modify write purpose. For example, if I want to set the PC3 as output, and I don't want other pins of this port to get affected. I have two options to do so. I can read the direction register, modify the PC3 value to 1, and then write the data back to the register. Or by simply using the direction set register, where I can simply write a 1 to the PC3 location. It will perform the read modify write by itself, and I don't need to worry about it. We also have the direction clear register. It is the same as the direction set, but instead of setting the pin as output, it sets it as input. Writing a 1 to the particular pin sets the pin as input, and writing a 0 does not have any effect. The LED on the board is connected to the pin PC0, so we need to set it as output. Now we can do that using two different methods. Either use the direction register to first read the data, then modify the PC0 to 1, and then write the data back to the register. Or use the direction set register to simply write a 1 to the PC0. Both of these statements do the same job. Let me comment out one of them. Now in the while loop, we will blink the LED. 
We also have the direction toggle register, which toggles the direction of the pin from input to output, and vice versa. The output register is used to set the pin state to high and low. Writing a 1 to a particular pin sets it as high, and writing a 0 sets it as low. Just like the direction register, here also we have the out set register, out clear register, and the out toggle register. They are again used in the similar manner as the direction registers. We will see the output using all different methods. Let's start with the simple output register first. Here I am setting the pin PC0 to high by writing a 1 to the 0th position. Let's give a delay of 1 second. And reset the pin PC0 to low by writing a 0 to the 0th position. Again give the delay of 1 second. The above code will blink the LED every 1 second. Now let's try the same using the outset and out clear registers. To set the pin PC0, we will write a 1 to the 0th position in the outset register, and to reset the pin, we will write a 1 to the 0th position in the out clear register. Or we can also use the out toggle register to toggle the pin PC0. Let's comment out these parts, and we will test using the normal output register first. We need to call the clock init function in the main. Alright let's build the code now. The delay inclusion has some problems. Actually it should be util, not avr. Alright the code builds fine now. The code size is 190 bytes. We can directly flash the code to the board, or start the debugging session. Let's directly flash it for now. The code is flashed, and you can see the LED is blinking every one second. Here in the tools you can see the board is connected via the UPDI. This is the default setup for the explained mini, and we don't need to do anything by ourselves. Let's test the second set of statements to blink the LED. The code size has been reduced to 184 bytes with these statements. Let's flash it to the board. The LED is blinking every one second, so this way of setting and resetting pins works fine too. Now let's see the toggle function. The code size is now reduced to 160 bytes. The LED is blinking fine so the toggle function works too. We can use either of these methods to set and reset the pin. Now let's quickly see the debugger. This button will launch the debugging session. All right here we are in the debugger. We have access to different memory locations, like EEPROM, SRAM, fuses etc. We also have the watch windows to watch the variables. We will see their functions in the upcoming tutorials. Today we will just use the breakpoints. Right click on the statement where you want to put the breakpoint, go to breakpoint, and insert the breakpoint. Now we will run the debugger. It hit the first breakpoint we set. The LED is off because this statement turns it on, and it hasn't been executed yet. Resume the debugger, and it hits another breakpoint. The LED is on now, and this statement, once executed, will turn it off. Both the breakpoints are in the while loop, so we will keep hitting them. We have other functions like step over, step into, etc. But I will show their usage in some other tutorial, where they will be needed. We can stop the debugger using this stop button, and the board will run its operation in a normal way. This is it for the video. I hope you understood some basics about setting the clock, and blinking the LED. 
In the next tutorial, we will see how to configure the pin as input, and how to read its state. We will do this in a blocking way, and also using the interrupt. The link to download the code is in the description below. Leave comments in case of any doubt. Keep watching, and have a nice day ahead.